I have many friends and brothers and sisters in uniform who have dealt or are dealing with PTSD. I have seen this condition firsthand, and it is a terrible disorder, affecting those men and women who have given so much of themselves for us, our country, and the war on terror. Not only does it affect the individual, but also the family. We, as a society, need to come together and reach out to them now. Our next guest has a tremendous amount of care about those veterans and those who have served our country. We now find ourselves at times fascinated by the breakneck pace of global conflicts, the expansion of sophisticated and technologically incredible weaponry, and the American military always being at the core of every attempt to bring some measure of peace to the planet. Drawing from what can our military do and does accomplish is at the backbone of a series of novels written by our next guest. The Sigma Force novels have captivated millions with its intimate detail and suspense, leaving one to wonder how far we are from that exact kind of warfare. Welcome to Midpoint, author of more than 20 novels, his latest, The Sixth Extinction, a Sigma Force series entry. It's a pleasure to have James Rollins here today. James, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. How much of current military is drawn in and then becomes part of the Sigma Force novels? Because you've got to do a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of looking into what goes on, but also watch a lot of what happens currently in current events. Exactly. I always have sort of one, one hand in what's going on currently. I also have some friends in the military. Uh, I have some, uh, some uh, contact with DARPA, the Defense Department's Research and Development Wing. So I'm always really fascinating what's around that horizon that's uh, going to be used technologically to help support our military. And there are some, some crazy things, some wonderful things, some, some stuff that I love to expose in my books. So that's one of the joys of writing these stories is I get to, to look beyond the horizon, take my readers and show them really where we're heading uh, as a military force. What are the technological things that you're now focusing on? Because it does seem that every single day something new comes around and people are fascinated by what we have here. And then, literally speaking, maybe in the next book, in one of yours, and then in a movie, it shows up sometimes within months or even a year or two. It is hard keeping abreast of the cha these things change so rapidly that I have actually have a hard time keeping abreast. A current book I'm researching deals with uh, the fact that about this w drone warfare that's going on. And you know, it's gone from having pilots that are automated that are driving these drones to the fact that now some of them are becoming automated and they're building these sort of artificial intelligence types of units into these drones so they can operate independently. And so that this isn't you know this isn't sci-fi. This is just uh, around the bend. It's just uh, it's, we're going to be seeing that uh, being deployed very very soon. It does, though, kind of reach into sci-fi just a little bit, because when you look at the Sigma Force books, there are things in there that people have not seen and, and quite frankly, can't imagine happening just yet. So a lot of the material that you find, would you say that it's most of it, at least in the books, is not far off from actually being in use by the military somewhere today? Right. You know, I, I definitely want to keep just at the edge of that fringe. I have a section at the end of all my books as to what's true, what's not. Uh, so I sort of lay out exactly where that line is between truth and fiction. So then if I, any type of topic I raise in the novel, whether it's about some history aspect or science or technology or where the military is heading, I can leave some breadcrumbs for the readers to follow. So if you have some any interest, you can see where, where I'm basing this on and, and get an idea of where we're headed. What about some of those breadcrumbs? Because there has to be parallels between what's happening right now in the American military around the world and what you write about. It is. I mean, I, I did a USO tour to Iraq and Kuwait back in 2010. I got to see the men and women on the field. Uh, my former uh, profession before uh, becoming an author was veterinarian. So I saw some of the war dogs out in the field. I talked to some of the gentlemen out there, found the relationship between the handlers and their dogs. And what a uh, unique abilities these dogs have and what that unique relationship is. And so I, I love that so much. I captured a pair of that, a handler and his dog. I put them in the book. Just again to sort of s uh, showcase what these these dogs can do. Uh, most people go, gosh, I can't believe these dogs can actually do this. I had the book vetted by some handlers, and they go, actually, Jim, you know, if anything, you're a little restrained in what these dogs can do because what the abilities are just amazing. So I love sort of shining a light on some of these amazing heroes. Some of them with four legs. We hear so much about Delta Force. Delta Force. It always comes up in movies right. now. Whatever we hear constantly about what these special groups are doing. Now yours is Sigma Force. How close? Exactly. Are you really in Sigma Force? How close are you and the characters that you put together here to being real? I have some feedback from some people wondering if Sigma Force is real. Uh, Sigma <laughs> Force is a group of Special Forces soldiers that have been drummed out of the service for various reasons. DARPA recruits them and retrains them in various scientific disciplines to be basically field operatives. And, and there's some, you know, I, I don't doubt that maybe DARPA has field operatives out there that are, are in some type of capacity functioning out there. 
Uh, I describe them as basically scientists with guns. Now, scientists with guns, though, but that adds something else here because now you're getting right back into the science of what goes on here. And the science means that things are changing. So as you research all of these things, you find out a little bit more, you put it to use, maybe you change it just a little bit. Right. How much of it is actually then molding you and your look at the world and what goes on militarily and what America is doing in certain theaters now? It changes. I mean, and not, it's not just some, even even as I'm writing the book. Is I, I love to I love to interview people for research, and so I get to, to speak to these men and women out there to find out what you know what they're facing. And the challenges change. Uh, the challenges just a, a decade ago facing men and women in the, in, in the war in theater of war have, have changed. And I'm fascinated and as rapidly as it's changing to try to again to expose people to that. When you write about the books, I guess, and now you're also looking at what happens here. We have ISIS now, which is a, a huge factor around right. the world, which many people are saying is going to be the next terrorist war that America fights. I'm often curious here when I talk to authors that maybe what's happening now is a little bit too close for comfort. You've probably already thought about this, and the people that you've talked about with and learned a little bit about the military from, they've seen this coming too. Yeah, and it's, and it's not passed by uh, the military either. They actually have uh, consulted authors to sort of say, let's let's play war games. Let's let's see where where we might be heading. And so they they've challenged the authors to try to come up with scenarios that that might that they might face, including like ISIS. ISIS is scary. Here we have sort of a medieval mindset armed with with you know m the new modern area millennial warfare. That's that is a, a scary combination possibility we're going to see something next to ISIS in one of the books or perhaps something already exists? You know, at this point, I, will, I, I already have something in the works that's going to deal exactly with that topic. What's the, um, so the sixth extinction is now, I imagine there's got to be two or three after this already. You're well ahead of yourself on where Sigma Force is going? <laughs> exactly. I'm already just about polishing up the book that's going to follow this and I already have ideas for the book that follows after that. When's the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there, there's been some nibbles, and there's certain things I can't talk about, so uh, okay. we'll, leave, we'll leave it at that. Since I'm so at this point, I've, I've been told you know I'm not allowed to say things. So. Okay, but then again, I am a journalist, Infer so I have to want. ask these things. If you're going to talk about it, we have to see when the movie <laughs> is coming out. That'll be the next. Jim, I'll tell you what. V much luck with the Sixth Extinction. Great series of books, and uh, we'll you. talk to you when the movie comes out. By the way, we'll find out exactly how they did with it. Fantastic. Okay, thanks a lot, Jim. Jim Rollins joining us next hour on Midpoint: The Ferguson Riots the serious nature, and so much more when we continue.